Hey, I'm going to talk you through the Tractive System pre-charge and why it not be as simple as you think. And I'll also talk you through one of my solutions for pre-charging the Tractive System. This is a relatively complex solution, but I think it's extremely robust. So if you're not familiar with the Tractive System, let's just start with that. We have our accumulator and that could be up to 600 volts as allowed by FSAE. We've got our two airs, the positive air and negative air. They isolate the tractive system from the accumulator. They basically completely disconnect it when they're open. And we also have the tractive system itself. And electrically, the motor controllers just look like a big old capacitor with a, a little parasitic resistance hanging off it. That just very slowly discharges that capacitor when not powered, basically to make it tend towards being safe. We're required to have a discharge circuit, which is another resistor and often a contactor. And whenever that contactor is closed, whenever that relay is closed, that makes sure that the capacitor discharges through this resistor as well. And this, um, this discharges very, very quickly, the, the capacitor. So it very quickly makes the tractive system safe. So that, that's all well and good. That makes a lot of sense, that uh, discharge resistor. But why do we need to pre-charge? Well, when we power up the electric vehicle, the negative air closes. I'll just make that a short, because that's for us, that's always going to be closed while we talk about this. This, um, this capacitor, when it's empty, looks like a short circuit. And what that means is when this air closes, you've got 600 volts going through what is essentially a short circuit. And that is an enormous current very briefly before that capacitor becomes charged and looks like an open circuit. So what's going to happen is that current, that's going to damage either the air or even the tractive system itself. These parts can only handle uh, charging and discharging so fast. And that's why we need a pre-charge. Now, a very common uh, and, and very simple way to do this is to have a pre-charge relay and a pre-charge resistor. So this is just like the discharge circuit. And this is often controlled by a timer. So you might have your uh, TSMS, when you turn the tractive system on, this will close and charge, uh, pre-charge through this pre-charge resistor. And then after some conserv conservative amount of time, when this is assumed to be charged enough, then you close the air. And because this is charged, it looks more or less like an open circuit, so no current flows through this, at least when it just closes. Now, that timer solution, that is really simple and really, really effective. It's, it's quite good if everything goes right. What I mean by that is if there are any, any small faults, you can actually end up damaging this air quite readily. So in 2019, we had a, a situation where the negative, uh, where the discharge relay was welded because it wasn't spec'd quite right. So with that welded shut, this discharge resistor is now always connected. And what you have when you go into your pre-charge sequence is a resistor, a resistor connected across a voltage source. So you have this voltage divider going through the pre-charge and through the discharge. What that means is instead of your instead of your pre-charge curve nice and smoothly making its way up to the voltage of the accumulator, this uh, voltage divider will actually limit the maximum voltage that that's going to reach. It might only get to say, if these resistors are equal, for instance, then it'll only get to halfway. So if you have a timer-based solution, what's actually going to happen is the pre-charge is only going to go to some amount less than where it should be. And then after some time elapses, that air will close and snap that voltage up to the accumulator voltage. So this, this distance right here, that's, that's a real problem. That, uh, that could have contributed to why we welded what is a very expensive component? These are, these are not cheap. So that's one failure mode, but let's consider another one. And I think this could be even more insidious. If you have just a, a connector that's not well connected or disconnected, if you basically, if you have a wiring fault, 
if this precharge circuit for some reason has a wiring fault, you won't know about it until this air is damaged or until the tractor system is destroyed. Because let's think about this, this fault mode. If this is open circuit, that means you'll never have a precharge, which means that all through this precharge duration, the tractive system is going to stay at zero volts right up until you close this air. It's like having no precharge at all. And then the moment that air shuts, this will snap up the full accumulator voltage. Now, depending on what your parts are rated for, that could actually destroy the power, the input stage of your motor controllers. This, it's a real problem. All right, so what are we gonna do about this? And we could put into place some kind of control system that would only close the air when the precharge is actually complete. So what's the condition for the precharge being complete? Well, if the voltage here across this capacitor is very close to the voltage of the accumulator. We need some way to compare these voltages to make sure we actually get to, say, 90, 95% of the accumulator voltage. If this is our timeline, we have, at some point, the precharge relay is gonna close, and the voltage on this side of the precharge resistor is gonna snap up because that's connected directly to the accumulator. So that voltage is going to shoot up and stay there. And the voltage downstream is going to go through that nice RC charging curve. So if there was some way that we could measure this voltage and this voltage and compare them, then we would be able to put into place some kind of con control scheme that looks for the tractive system side being very close to the accumulator side voltages. And once you get a very small gap here, that's when you can close your air. Now a control strategy like this can also address the two failure modes that I was talking about before. Let's consider this failure mode where there's an open circuit on the precharge resistor. When you close the air, of course you'll get the, the accumulator voltage snapping up. If there's an open circuit here, you'll also have no current flowing here. So the voltage at this red node on the tractive side, that's also going to shoot up very quickly. So basically, we can make a case for there being some kind of envelope where if the precharge is too fast, then there must be something wrong. Because if the precharge is too fast, we must have that open circuit situation. So we can kind of rule out if the curve ever goes into this area, that's a problem. And likewise, if we have this situation where we have some kind of welded discharge relay or, or a fault mode that looks like that, we could also say if the precharge is too slow, then there must be a problem. We're going to expect this curve to kind of follow a very predictable line. So if that happens to be too slow, like if it, if it stays down here somewhere in this envelope, then that's also a problem. So we kind of have this, this envelope of acceptable performance, and if the tractive system voltage doesn't, kind of makes an excursion out of that into these forbidden areas, then we know that, or at least we can assume that there's something wrong and we don't proceed with closing this air. So how can we actually implement this? I'm gonna draw the precharge circuit just here but there's the contactor, there's the precharge resistor, and we want to measure these two voltages with respect to the tractive system minus. So we want to measure the accumulator side voltage and the tractive system side voltage. That's VTS and that's V accumulator. And at some point, because we're working with logic here, we're probably going to have to cross an isolation barrier to the GLV because that's where the relay that does the, the shutdown circuit switching is. So this could be zero to 600 volts. So I guess the first thing we'll do is take it through a voltage divider and that will make it something manageable. Let's call that zero to 10 volts. And we need to go through an optocoupler I won't draw the whole thing out, but we need to go through an optocoupler to get over to the low voltage side. And 
You can't really send analog voltages through optocouplers. I mean, you can, but you kind of you have to characterize them for their linearity and you know manufacturing tolerances, temperature drift. It's probably not a good idea. But there exists a IC. There, are, or there exists a circuit called a voltage to frequency converter. And just like its name says, it's going to take this voltage and convert it to some square wave of a varying frequency. And now we can pass that frequency through the optocoupler. And on the other side, all we have to do is send that to a pin on our microcontroller and just measure the frequency. And these are, these are super linear. So we're going to have a very predictable, um, we're going to have a very predictable kind of characteristic for frequency as some function of the ACC. And that function is going to be like the, the voltage to frequency relationship of our VF converter. And it's also going to be a function of the voltage divider here. But this is, this is very simple to uh, basically bench test for. And we just do the same with the tractive system voltage and we have the frequency for the tractive system and we have the frequency for the accumulator. So in a nutshell, that is basically the analog side of taking these two really important voltages and getting them onto the GLV system so that our microcontroller can look at them and implement this kind of logic, this kind of comparison between the accumulator voltage and the tractive system voltage to make sure that the precharge is not only complete, because this voltage is now equal to this, but also plausible. If it happens too fast, that's implausible. And if it happens too slow, that's also implausible. And those are functions of the accumulator voltage, the precharge resistance, and the tractive system capacitance. Okay, that's pretty cool, but let's see it in action. What we have is the microcontroller, the contactor, precharge resistor, and a simulated tractive system. It's not being charged to say 600 volts, instead it's being charged to about 5 volts, but that 5 volts is, after all the scaling that would happen in the voltage dividers, that 5 volts is the same as what you would have at this point here. So basically, I'm just bypassing the pre-scaling voltage dividers. I'm injecting this signal in directly here rather than here. And there's like a there's a bunch of bodges on it because I can't create high voltages here. I can only work with the small voltages that I have. And I don't have a tractive system. So what I have as a tractive system is a big old capacitor and a resistor that are standing in for this and really like this is still a thousand microfarad capacitor so it's um it's actually pretty close to what you would expect reasonably for a tractive system but anyway let's power it up and see how it goes now we're looking at these status lights here they will step up as it moves through its sequence so we're powering on i'm not plugged in there we go Okay, let's do that again, but a little slower. There's the first click is the pre-charge contactor closing. And then the second click is the uh, air controller closing. This is just a relay that drives the air. And then very briefly after that, the contactor opens again. And as the state machine steps through its states, you'll see these lights change their states as well. So I'll just power cycle this. So you can hear that overlap time just as it moves into the last state. That's the overlap time between these, just because it makes sense to not switch the air and the precharge at the same time. You want a little bit of overlap to make sure that everything's settled properly. Now let's simulate a fault. I'm going to take a another resistor and I'm going to short it across the capacitor. That's going to look like the thallium mode, the very first thallium mode we discussed, which was this 
welded discharge. I'm going to insert this cap this resistor into the circuit, and that should slow the pre-charge. Now I'm not going to put it directly there because that's a bit hard. I think I'll put it between these two test points, which are exactly the same. It's just like shorting it across the capacitor. And we'll see what happens. Three second delay on startup. Okay, so the pre-charge didn't complete as quickly as it did before, and we didn't get three clicks. What actually happened was the pre-charge relay closed and the pre-charging target was never actually met. And so because the pre-charge basically took too long, we went outside the envelope for plausibility. We went into this area where the line is down here somewhere instead of up here. It's pre-charging too slow. And so we've entered the error state and we have an error indicator and an, uh, a status code being illuminated. And basically the same thing happens if your pre-charge is too fast. If you have the situation where you've got say an open circuit here, so this voltage rises instantaneously once this voltage goes high, you enter this area of the envelope and you get the same behavior but just a different fault code showing on the LEDs. So there you have it, a fault tolerant pre-charge with diagnosis for wiring faults. Just one last thing before we finish up, I thought I'd show you the console logged output during a pre-charge sequence. So this is a regular pre-charge sequence. You can see the time log on the left, the pre-charge percentage in the middle, and the uh, TS voltage on the right. We have an output of the target percentage. That's quite low at the moment because my parasitic capacitance, uh, parasitic resistance on the capacitor is quite low. So I've, is, so I've had to set that quite low. And we just get a running log and finally the pre-charge complete notice at the end. These, uh, these notes here are indicating what state the device is in. Now let's repeat that with the same resistor hack as before. Okay, so we've got the voltage log on the right there and you'll see that that capped out at about 210 volts. So that, that must be a function of the voltage divider that we created. We can see that the pre-charge ran for about five seconds before giving up at 69%. We also uh, have jumped into the error state and we get a little bit of help out of this. It's, it's said that the pre-charge is too slow and then gives us a list of potential causes. That's all I have for you. Thanks for watching.